here in Nigeria, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has condemned last Saturday's attack by suspected hoodlums on his supporters at a campaign rally in Lagos. Reacting through a tweet, Obi warned that the civic space must not be shrunk through official inaction in the face of primitive attempts at intimidation. He called on security agencies to protect the fundamental rights of Nigerian citizens to free speech and assembly. Earlier on Thursday last week, it was reported that Director General of People's Democratic Party's Presidential Campaign Council in Rivers states that Dr. B.A. Sekibo escaped a gun attack in Port Harcourt by men dressed in police uniform. The hoodlums were said to have opened fire at Sekibo's bulletproof vehicle at Rainbow Town in Port Harcourt, where he had gone to inspect the venue of the upcoming presidential rally of his party. He told reporters in Port Harcourt on Friday that his car was riddled with bullets and the venue of the rally set on fire. Now, head of elections, Yaga Africa, Paul James, and a security analyst, that's Ambrose Iboke, joins us now to discuss the mock accreditation results and emerging threats to elections. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us here on Newsday. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the afternoon, uh, for the invitation. Good afternoon. And thank you for accepting it. Um, so let's begin with um, the outcome of the mock accreditation. We understand that some key observations by Yaga Africa were made in terms of network challenges, faulty BVAS, and the on the positive side, the security personnel were present, professional, and did not interfere with the process. I'm just wondering how confident you might be that INEC will be able to implement the, res the observations that you made and recommendations that you made within such a short space of time, seeing that the elections are just days away. Yeah, so first off, INEC conducted two critical activities that are central to the elections. One was the beavers testing. I uh, got the last batch of the beavers consignment that was deployed on January 3rd and uh, tested it in all of its offices nationwide. But I uh, uh, said this was an internet exercise and was not open to the public. Yaga Africa was only able to observe that in 14 of the, of the 36 states and the FCT. And then uh, in some of these places, what we saw were challenge about network to be able, uh, able to install some of the, uh, uh, some of the uh, applications that INEC will need to install on the devices. In some places, there were concerns around shortage of the beavers machine, the shortfall in the number expected, especially like in Edo State, there was shortfall of 40. And then in Kwara State, they also have complained about shortfall for the backup of what they need for the beavers. And so we had great concerns first about the testing because we thought this important exercise should also have been open to public scrutiny given how central the beavers machine will be to the elections. Um, this exercise by INEC happened between January 4th and 11th in the state offices. Um, on, the Feb on February 4th, INEC uh, did the mock accreditation exercise in about uh, 436 locations. We were in 218 locations. Uh, granted that the election was hugely successful by all standards because it was an opportunity to tell, test the technological devices that will be used in the process, but it also reveals some challenges, one on the part of election administration, the second on the part of technology. The first thing we saw that we were concerned about was the migration of voters. Some voters showed up at the polling unit and realized, oh, they have been moved to another polling unit. That information was not provided, communication about that was not clear. And so we are worried about how INEC, how INEC is, will be able to manage this before uh, the elections on February the 25th and also on March the 11th. The other aspects of the process was that um, we saw the device worked well. In some places, it took between, in 74% of location that we went to, it took between one to two minutes to accredit a voter. In 24%, uh, in between three to six minutes, uh, to five minutes. And in 6%, between six minutes and more. 
And then you begin to wonder whether INS Cherry picked this location and even these devices because they worked well. And then uh, in 20, 35% of location we went to, INEC even had more devices deployed, two or more beavers, which gave opportunity to test as many de uh, devices as they want. But then on the flip side, the concern also was that this process was largely handled by INEC officials from their field offices and not the ad hoc staff that will be using the devices on election day. So training may be a problem. Another thing that we're worried about is also the timing of the exercise. It happened barely 20 days uh, before the election. And so whatever challenges or concerns that we may have seen and may have raised, we are not very confident that INEC may be able to resolve all of this before the election. All right, so I'd like to turn to Mr. Eboke for a, a bit of security analysis. Now, based on the same result from Yaga Africa, only 15 states were able to upload their data onto the IREV. And of course, that's the platform that's supposed to provide results to the nation on Election Day at a relatively speedy process. Now, I'd like to hear from a security perspective, what is more critical for this particular election? Is it speedy announcement of results or delayed announcement with action? Accuracy. What is in the better interest of our security? Well, the two scenarios we have raised are very critical. We have to have a speedy announcement of results because of uh, to prevent manipulation. And on the other hand, we also need to be accurate in the report in the results we are transmitting. The major security concern about the 2023 election and the use of beavers is the issue of hacking. There is fear, and rightly so, that the applications of the back end of uh, these Viva's uh, uh, central information gathering area may be hacked by unscrupulous elements. Uh, so uh, INEC has not been able to tell us their readiness to fight against malwares, against phishing, and against hackers who are uh, depends on uh, disrupting the data, or even. And I cannot let us know what, what are the algorithm, how foolproof is the algorithm that we're using to write the program for Beavers. And uh, last, one time I did suggest, what of, uh, in terms of the uh, saving system, has I not be able to, you know, migrate the data to cloud so that if systems uh, collapse from a particular Beavers machine or uh, the IREF uh, happens to have issues, are we having a backup plan in terms of uh, cloud? Uh, these are issues we need to uh, uh, security concerns about it. Then uh, another security concern is that when people like what Yaga has observed, if people do not on that particular day of election, we are just informing people that they cannot vote in the particular police center where they thought they have been assigned to, and then you are asking them to move away, maybe some distances they could not cover or some places they don't feel all, all right uh, comfortable with. That will cause problems. That will cause uh, disaffection. And uh, for some people, it may lead to a riotous situation. Uh, so uh, there is still time to foster that kind of security issue. I next should think of sending maybe bulk SMS messages to particular individuals whose uh, polling units have been transferred or moved to another place. In that way, they will be pre-informed before uh, the election of their new uh, polling units. The other issue is the issue of, you know, if the beavers refuse to function or if it malfunctions, what are the backup plans by INEC? Although the Electoral Act did state that if elections could not hold a particular polling booth, that it can be repeated within 24 hours. How is INEC, you know, coping with that? And how is INEC able to sensitize people uh, to ensure that they are comfortable with that in case it happens in their places. Then the other issue of the issue of the security we are looking at is the safety of the voter. Uh, there are issues uh, of audio calls of uh, people who are intimidating some people that they must vote a particular party and that when they vote, they must you know take pictures of it with their phones. And some of the polling booths are not uh, very, uh, in terms, uh, uh, when I say uh, secluded, they are very open to people. And uh, if such, so, some agents could be standing by to see what you voted for. So people should be properly educated. There should not be raising of uh, ballot papers to show uh, agents. Agents should be kept far away from the polling booth. And the polling booth should have some level of secrecy. In that way, 
uh, you know, disaffections from political uh, affiliations or people around will be prevented. And then, these two weeks or a few days remaining is a very uh, critical period in the uh, election. INEC should beef up security. INEC should screen the ad hoc staff it has been using. INEC should ensure that these ad hoc staffs are not being compromised because that is the beginning of security situation. And then INEC should seek for help. It is very clear that the uh, number of uh, police, Nigerian police we have, will not be able to amount, uh, will not be able to be enough to mount the police units so this is the time we need all the security agencies to be on deck we need the police we need the dss uh, we need the civil defense we need uh, even paramilitary uh, uh you know agencies as well as stand back uh, stand uh, we need uh, the military to also stand by in case there are uh, situations uh, that get out of hand then INEC offices this is the time to be for security around INEC offices INEC equipment and INEC materials and then this another security issue which we we'll look at is the issue of national union for road transport workers especially as it concerns lagos where there have been change of leadership where some uh, the leadership have been accused of being very close to one political uh, political party so all this that should cause disaffection and make people lose trust in the process therefore leading to uh security issues that may arise from the INEC should try to avoid them because there are security landmines that may cause disruption to the election Thank you so much. Now, I'll bring this conversation back to um, Paul James. And, um, of course, you, you've made your observation about how the polling, you know, po polling unit situation, you know, being assigned, people dif being assigned to different polling units might cause a disaffection. And during this mock accreditation as well, INEC was also accused of not putting out information in time, which was why there was, you know, relative relatively low turnout. But one thing INEC has done is that they have released the voting procedure. I'll just read read it out you know, quickly on my phone, and I, I'd like to ask you if you're content with this or if, if you think more needs to be done. So in the procedure, it says voting starts at 8.30 a.m., and it says for number two, present your PVC for accreditation using BVAS. Number three, it says check and be sure your name is on the register of voters in that polling unit. Number four, get auth authenticated with the BVAS through fingerprint or facials. Five, once accredited, you will be issued a ballot paper. Six, go to the voting cubicle to make your cubicle in secret or your choice, I'm sorry, in secret and drop marked ballot paper in the ballot box. And number seven, you can leave or stay 300 meters away from the voting area to witness vote sorting and counting. And what is, do you think that this covers all the, most of the issues that you have after that mock accreditation? Yeah, so this has been the practice. This has been the standard, especially since we started conducting elections in the, uh, I miss the COVID-19. INEC had just set the time for election from 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. to allow officials to be able to properly set up the polling, uh, the polling unit. Now, the other challenge are, are there for me will be about voters locating their polling unit ahead of the election. Uh, if you recall, voter registration was done at the INEC offices. At some point, it was devolved to the ward uh, centers. And not very many voters know where polling units are located. Some voters, for instance, especially new voters, don't know where these units are located. INEC also had created new polling units to expand polling unit access for voters. Now, there is the lack of information. I see efforts uh, from INEC uh, in the past week to send out some public communication about how people can locate their polling unit. But I am concerned that how many of these voters have access to technology to be able to check their polling unit online? Perhaps INEC could develop other means by uh, posting this polling unit, uh, this list of voters across the polling units that we have in the country and also directing voters to where they may find their name to be able to vote effectively on uh, election day. Now, there are also still some concerns from the polling unit as they are. Why INEC expanded polling unit was to decongest some polling units, but we still got more than 10,000 polling units that have 1,000 or more 
voters. So I, I am worried about congestion in some of these polling units. It could also have its own security implication. And how INE could be able to manage the process. In Koji State, for instance, in Ghana, we have a polling that has 11,000 voters. Imagine if all of these voters will come out on election. We have locations with 8,000 voters, locations with 3,000 voters. So I wait to see how INEC is able to manage this. But most importantly, also the conversation around voter migration must be, uh, must be at the front burner. INEC must provide clear and concise communication to voters about how they will locate their polling units and how they will be able to effectively vote on election day so that people are not technically disenfranchised by the undoings of INEC. Right. Now, uh, Mr. Iboke, just to, to continue with the security aspect of this conversation, of course, we've seen the recent surge in uh, politically motivated violence, especially against uh, members of opposition parties. Now, given the tense environment that is already in existence in the country, uh, with various protests and outbursts, pockets of unrest, if I may call them that, due to the Naira scarcity, the fuel scarcity, with 12 days to go, uh, you know, Enugu, for example, have said that they will need 13,000 security personnel for the general elections. That's just for Enugu state. Realistically, in 12 days, will we see law and order across Nigeria? Uh, there are security concerns about desperate elements who are bent on uh, trying to ensure that we don't have a smooth election in the southeast and so many other parts of the country. Uh, this is the time to rise up as a nation to put all we have at stake to ensure that we have a smooth transition. Uh, although uh, we have been told that uh, the security personnel in the polling booths are not supposed to be armed. Uh, but uh, where I, where I would like to recommend that around the perimeter or around the vicinity of each polling unit to be placed armed security personnel. Because we don't know what desperate people are planning to do. Some of them have talks that, that are armed to the teeth. And when you come, when they invade a polling unit and you don't have a deterrent in terms of armed security uh, men or women, then there will be a problem that they will have a field day. Uh, why we uh, advocate that there should not be security, armed security men in polling units, but around the vicinity and contiguous areas in every polling uh, uh, zone, there should be armed people who can have like a rapid response in case there are armed talks that come to invade some polling units. Uh, let me tell you, uh, while we are planning, those who are trying to destabilize and make sure disrupt the election are also planning. So the uh, INEC and uh, Nigerians and the security agencies should be one step ahead. Why we may say that each uh, state or each environment has a peculiar security issues, uh, the security agencies, it's time in this next 12 days to sit down with each state, uh, and the chief security officer of each state, which is the governor, and sit down with the commissioners of the directors of DSS and other uh, heads of military, uh, paramilitary agencies in the state to sort out the peculiar needs of each state. Because it's not enough to just give directive in a, a, from Abuja and said, okay, we are dividing uh, this man to this state, this man to this state. We have to work according to the sec uh, uh, security peculiarities of uh, each, each state. And for the politicians, uh, the people, there are people who have made high wired statements. Uh, just uh, this afternoon, we heard that a, a chief term of a, part, a very particular part, uh, political party has been invited by the DSS for some inflammatory remarks that is of a treasonable uh, expulsion. Uh, proportion that he made it, uh, over the weekend. No, these are unguarded statements. This is not the time for this is the time for the political leaders to calm their followers down and not to you know try to whip up sentiment and try to uh, uh, make sure that uh, people are very you know hyperactive. This is not the time. This is the time for all to put uh, things together and then also communities should ensure that they set up their own kind of uh, community policing. Uh, let, this is time for the elders, the youths, the president generals of the town unions, and the, the you know monarchs to sit down with their people and ensure that you know there are no violence in the election. Because what happens sometimes is that desperate politicians import talks from other towns or other uh, vicinities to come attack a particular location. And if the youths of that area or if the community 
is alert to those kind of uh, uh, actions, then they could be able to prevent it uh, from happening. In all, we should be able to have a good election. We should be able to deploy our personnel. We shouldn't say, oh, we cannot do it. We should be able to do it. And there should be deterrence to people who, uh, you know, cause election uh, violence. And we should offer protection to ad, ad hoc staff of INEC. Enough security should be provided for the youth coppers or for anybody who is an INEC officer, be it uh, ad hoc or be it permanent, that will be part of uh, this election. That is the only way we can get confidence. And then people should also have confidence in coming out if they are sure that all the security issues are being taken care of. I think we can do it. Nigeria has the capacity to contain any threats for this election. It is the will and the processes that matter. And once we get that right, elections will be successful and smooth. And hopefully they will actually be successful and smooth. It's been a pleasure having you join us, Mr. Ambrose Iboke, that's a security analyst, and of course, Mr. Paul James, um, head of elections, Yaga Africa. Thank you so much for sharing your insight with us. We appreciate your time here. On